want to lift up Jesus in spite of the situation and the circumstances that we're looking at on our TV. We still declare that he is mighty. And he's mighty enough to pull down the stronghold. He's mighty enough to heal the world and heal the land. And we just give him a glorious praise in here. Come on and put your hands together right where you are. Give God this glory and lift it up right here. Hey, say, Lord.
welcome City of Joy Nation to all of our online viewers, to the friends of our members of the City of Joy Nation. We welcome you to our wonderful Mother's Day service. We thank God for our awesome praise and worship ministry leading us into the presence of God to honor him and to worship him. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we will, we shall, we must rejoice and be glad in it. We do want to give a special shout out to the awesome mothers across the length and breadth of this country. We want to wish you on the behalf of City of Joy Nation a hearty and amazing happy Mother's Day. And this is a little shout out just to show a tribute to you amazing mothers to let you know how you appreciate it and how you're loved on by so many across the length and the breadth of this world. Hi, Ma. How are you? I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Wishing you many more. Stay safe and continue to be blessed. I want to send a special shout out to my mom, Deaconess Kathleen Pittman. Mom, happy Mother's Day. I love you. I hope that you enjoy your day, that you celebrate, that you dance. Um, I want to also send a special shout out to my sisters, my aunts, my cousins, all the mothers out there. You have my love and my continued respect. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day to all the ladies, my aunts, and my um, cousins. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to my mom, my number one queen, Jeanette Fendale. May you have a blessed and safe Mother's Day. If you have your awesome Bibles, I want you to find the Gospel of Mark, Chapter 5. Call your family, call your friends, text them, let them know City of Joy is on the air, calling on the name of the Lord and ready to share with you the marvelous word from the Lord. Call your family around the screen, around your iPad, because it's time to go in God's word. When you find that passage, the Gospel of St. Mark chapter 5, stand on your feet out of respect for the auspicious word of the Lord. You're singing with me right there. All over the world, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. He's worthy, y'all. Praise Him. Oh, my mom. Praise Him. What's His name? Jesus. Mark chapter 5, I want to look at two particular verses out of the New Living Translation, starting with verse 18 and verse 19 for our sermonic spotlight this morning on Mother's Day. And when he got into the boat, somebody shout boat, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus said, no, go home to your family, somebody shout family, and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he is. Verse 19, but Jesus said, no, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he is. I want to get prepared to pray, but I'm preaching as you remain on your feet for our prayer from the subject, thank God for mama. Thank God for mama. God, we love you. We thank you today. Thank you for your precious people as we've come to lift you up and magnify your name. 
share a word in us to strengthen our walk, to encourage us, and to empower us to be the disciples that you're calling for us to be. Give me preaching power and impact to encourage your people and to spread your gospel in this day and time. Loose your preaching and ministering angels in this time that we all will be blessed from your word. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength, and you shall forever and ever and always ever be our Redeemer. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Oh, look at somebody around you and tell them, thank God for mama. A 36-year-old mother was discovered to be in the advanced stages of terminal cancer. One doctor advised her to spend her remaining days enjoying herself on a beach in Acapulco. A second physician offered her the hope of living two to four years with the grueling side effect of chemotherapy and radiation treatment. She penned these words to her three small children. And I quote, I've chosen to try to survive for you. This has some horrible cost, including pain, loss of my good humor, and moods I won't be able to control. But I must try this, if only on the outside chance that I might live one minute longer and that minute could be the one you might need me when no one else is there. For this, I intend to struggle tooth and nail, so help me God. These are the words that this awesome mother penned to show the relentlessness of a mother. Can I invite you ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters to stick with me as I paint a sermonic backdrop for this discussion this morning. Jesus himself had just come through a storm with his disciples. In the midst of this storm, one particular disciple has made history. I think that's worthy to note and to uh, mention today that in the midst of a storm, one of Jesus' disciples made history. It may be something for you to know that your storms may not be all bad, but it is very possible in the midst of your storm that God will permit you to do something historical. The Bible tells us when you look at Jesus coming through this storm, the good news to tell you from Calvary's cross, Jesus himself has a history for coming through storms. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, Jesus has a history for coming through storms. Whether, whether it's the swine flu, whether it's Ebola, whether it's the Great Depression, whether it's uh, the World War II, whether it's Jim Crow, or whether it is even the pandemic called COVID-19, your Jesus has a history for coming through. And can I allow you to preach this sermon and whatever storm you're going through currently, whether it's with your family, with your friends, or in your finances, he has the ability because of his past to let me tell you that he will come through your present storm just like he has come through storms already. Shout already. The text tells us that when he leaves the sea with the storm, he enters into a countryside called the Gadarenes. Gadarenes. The Gadarenes is a country, but in the midst of the country, close to the seaside, he is in a place called Necropolis. Necropolis is called the city of the dead. These necropolises were all throughout these Bible days. They were elaborate cemeteries near ancient cities of old. When he goes over to Necropolis, he is met by a man who lives not in a townhome. He does not live in an apartment, but he's living amongst the tomb. 
So many people have called him crazy because his actions show something is off in his head. Where he lives is among tombstones and epitaphs. He, he's living in a place and he's doing certain things because Mark chapter 5 tells us that all day he runs from the top of the mountain to the lower part of the mountain. All day he's screaming like something has happened to him. And then all day he's using stones to cut himself. And so now we discover through what he's doing, he has the appearance like somebody who's crazy. He's living amongst the dead, but he's still living. He's living among those who can't talk, but yet he can talk. He is in a class of unstableness, living in a cemetery, cutting himself, running to the top, to the lower mountain, choosing to live among the dead versus the living. But yet when Jesus comes across and steps foot on the land, this man considered crazy runs to Jesus, gets down on his knees, and the Bible says he started to worship Jesus. Oh God. At that moment, I stopped calling him crazy because it seems to me in the midst of what he was dealing with, he had enough sense to run to Jesus. I, I happen to know people who have good sense and have degrees and they have a high level of mental abdomen, but when trouble comes, they turn to the wrong thing. They turn to the wrong people. They turn to the wrong habits. So maybe he is not as crazy as we think he is because at least he knows who to turn to. Look at two people around and tell them, at least I know who to turn to. <laughs> Yes, he knows who to turn to. And the Bible declared that Jesus deals with the man. The man has some spirits in him. And Jesus delivers the man from the demonic spirits that's on the inside. After he delivers the man, he gets back on the boat, ready to move forward in ministry. And your Bible says this man goes and begs Jesus and say, Jesus, can I go with you on your revival crusade? Can I come with you as you prepare to preach at your next ministry spot? Can I come with you? My testimony will help your ministry. He wants to go with Jesus. That's a good thing. Whenever somebody wants to go with Jesus, that's worth worthy to be applauded. That's something that we should strive to go with Jesus. But the text says Jesus looked at the man and he tells the man in the New Living Translation, I need for you not to go with me. I need you to go home. Somebody shout home. And the New Living Translation says, I need you to go home to your family. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something happened. When I saw that, it started to wave a red flag to me. Said, CA, you have to preach me. And I'm preaching this morning because when I looked at that, I discovered that when I read this text and it told me that he had to go home, now I'm discovering that there's some things in the text that I did not know about, but Jesus knew about it because nowhere when he was in the tomb did we hear him talking about his family, but Jesus tells him to go to his family then I remembered oh God I remembered in Matthew chapter 14 when there was a group of people following Jesus and they had become hungry Jesus asked his disciples to bring him something to minister to the people and the Bible says that Jesus gets a doggy bag prays over two fish five barley loaves of bread tells the disciples to sit the people in companies of 50 and they counted them up and the count was in your Bible 5,000 men not including women and children. I said, wait a minute. So you're telling me that there were 5,000 men, but during that time, they didn't want to mention some things about women and children. Yes, I'm telling you. And so when Jesus tells the man to go back home, he says, listen, brother, I have saved you. I've put you on your right path, but I need you to go back to the place 
that you were before the pandemic hit. Oh, God. He says, sir, I'm getting ready to go preach, but I recognize that you came from somewhere. You, you was reared by somebody. You was connected to some people. And I know you was in a home. I actually know you have a family. And I also know you got a wife and some children. But, but something traumatic happened in your life that caused you to leave home. Oh God, I feel like I'm preaching to somebody right now. Something happened in your life that hit you in your spirit and the spirits that you were fighting against, they're goal was to make you leave the people you love. Oh God, I feel like I'm preaching to about a hundred people right now. You're battling some things in your life. You're battling some spirits. You're battling some things and those things are trying to pull you from the people you love. But I declare and decree a word over you right now in the genesis of this message that they will not pull you away from your family. God will strengthen you to get through this. Look at everybody around you and tell them God is going to help you get through it. He's going to help you get through it. Jesus says, sir, I want you to come with me, but when I look at where you've come from, I recognize that while you were temporary insane, your family was missing a link. Oh, God. While you was insane, your bike was missing a wheel. While you was insane, your airplane was missing a propeller, and I need for you to go back home to your family to fulfill the link that's been missing just as long as you've been away. Oh God, my God. While you've been MIA, while you've been going through what you've been going through, your wife has been carrying the load with the children. Oh God, they've been, she's been carrying the load and, and Jesus says the reason why I know it is because I have been strengthening your wife's shoulders because I had to strengthen your wife's shoulders because you wasn't in the house. But I need for you since you're saved now, preach pastor now since I've laid my hands on you and I've got some spirits out of you I need you to go back home to your family oh God oh God oh God I need to preach this today and I've come by to tell somebody here this morning that God is getting ready to do something in your life he's getting ready to fix some things so you can go back to the places you've been MIA you can go back and help some areas where you should have been helping. You can go back and support in some areas that you should have been supporting. You can go back and add some value to the places that the lack of your value didn't add. Somebody ought to shout, God is going to change something. Yes, he's going to change something. And so, and so, and so, so when God tells Jesus to tell the man to go back home, watch this, then Jesus says something. He says something. He says, he says, I need you to go back home. I, he, he, he doesn't have to say much to say much. <laughs> That's something about Jesus. When he tells you to go back home, it's because you shouldn't have left in the first place. When he tells you to go back and do something, you should have done it in the first place. He says, I blessed you where you started, but something happened and the spirits drove you from where you needed to be. But I need you to go back. Can't you see this man going back home? While he's going back home, he see his awesome children, and they come out, and they're happy. They say, Daddy, Daddy. Oh, he said, children, I'm glad to see you. And they say, how has things been going? And listen what the children say. They said, they said, Dad, we thank God for Mama. We thank God for Mama because Mama has been carrying the load. Oh, God, I got to preach this. We thank God for mama because she had to take care of the house by herself. Can I, can I preach on that note for a moment? Uh, she, they said, listen, daddy, mama never had money to hire a maid, but she cleaned the house herself every week. I wish I had two people to talk back to me. And when God has blessed you with a good mama, you ought to thank God for mama because there were times when mama should have been going to DSD but she had to go to Home Depot instead because it was something that the house needed. Oh God, I'm talking about some good mamas that we're thanking God for today. When mamas could have bought a new outfit, instead they took 
the same money to go to Sears Robux to buy new comforters for all the children. Glory to God. And you ought to thank God for mama because mama sacrificed and carried the load. Let me lean in, child of God. You ought to thank God because the reason you didn't know that mama didn't go to the hairdresser, mama did her hair at home so the kids could be able to have a TV and video games so they wouldn't be on the street at night trying to find a way of life. We ought to thank God for mama. Oh, God, thank God, thank God, thank God for mama. Thank God for mama. She took care of the house, but not only did she take care of the house, we ought to thank God for mama because mama took care of the kids. Somebody shout, she took care of the kids. Yes, Lord, mama, 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 let me deal with this, y'all, because a mama is not only somebody who has the facility to have children. She is one who has the ability to take care of the children she has. Lord, help me preach in here. See, some women can have children, but that doesn't make your mama. What makes your mama is being able to take care of the children who you have been blessed to have. Oh, God. See, a baby doesn't make you a woman. A baby, watch this, means that you're able to produce, but when you care for the baby, that determines that you're a mother. Just because you're a man doesn't make you a father. Because many men have the equipment, but they don't have the execution. Lord, help me preach in here. And so just to have a child doesn't make you a mother. Being able to take care of the child makes you a mother. Let me tell you something. When you think about mothers who sacrifice for their kids, a mother will leave work to go to a child's school after she's worked eight or nine hours just to meet with the child's teacher. Preach, pastor, I'm doing the best I can. The mother is not just interested in making a child. A mother is interested in raising a child. Lord have mercy. A mother will cook dinner and take the kids to practice because when God blesses you with a mother, that mother will sacrifice for her kids. High five somebody if you got a good mother and say thank God for my good mother. Now, not only was she a good mother taking care of the home, and not only was she a good mother taking care of the kids, but she was a good mother because she taught her children how to take a little bit and go a long way. <laughs> if I had at least 100 mothers to say amen, Pastor, because you taught your kids how to survive when, when all you had in the kitchen was, was, was a couple of bananas and, and you didn't even have meat. You taught them how to cut up bananas, put it on some bread with some mayonnaise, and make a banana sandwich. Y'all going to help me in here. You taught your children. We may not have a lot in the refrigerator, but we can take that one big thing of cheese. We can make cheese toast for breakfast. We can eat bologna and cheese for lunch. We can make macaroni and cheese for dinner. When you have a good mama, you ought to thank your mama for teaching you how to survive. Oh God, teaching you how to survive. You've been blessed. You saw mama do some stuff that you didn't know could be done. Mama would cook fried chicken on Sunday. But on Monday, make chicken melt sandwiches for you to eat. And on Tuesday, you'll be eating chicken salad for lunch. You ought to throw your hands up and say, I thank God for my mother. Uh, you, you've seen you've seen your mother take a hundred dollar bill, go on a budget and buy food to eat, but also buy clothes for the kids to wear to school. You ought to thank your hands, throw your hands up and say, thank God for mother. <laughs> uh, mama taught you how to take a little bit 
and turn it into a lot. Uh, you've seen mama go into the a cabinet and get the bread and everybody said throw away the bread and it was the piece of bread that nobody wants to eat. I'm talking about that end piece that nobody want to take time to eat and mama said don't you throw away that bread. You got one good piece and the end piece. I'm going to teach you how to use that end piece even though the end piece is shaped different than the regular piece when you put it on the regular piece it don't fit but that describes a good mama. A good mama know how to take something that don't fit and make it fit. Can I preach like I feel it? A good mama can take something that don't work and make it work. A good mama can take something that everybody was going to throw away and turn it in something that would be a blessing to others. So, so the daddy is there with the children and he says, we thank God for mama because mama would use things that nobody else would use for a good purpose. Oh God. And can I submit to you ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that you ought to thank God right now for mama because God strengthened mama to be able to carry the load. And can I speak a word to at least 300 mothers right now when you were tired from working all day, but you kept on going. Oh God, we ought to give God praise for you. When you were frustrated but you kept on going when you cried when you was on the bus home from work but you kept on going you didn't know if daddy was gonna come in cuz daddy been gone for a long time but you kept taking the children to church Lord have mercy you ought to give God a praise if you got a good mama because the reason that you learned to pray is because mama took the time to teach you how to call on his name mama said get on your knees tell the Lord now you lay me down to sleep I pray the Lord my soul to keep if I should die before I wake I pray the Lord my soul to take up thank God for a good mama that taught me how to pray thank God for a good mama we didn't have a lot of clothes but mama kept the clothes we had she kept them clean and she kept them iron look at somebody and say thank God for mama thank God for mama Thank God for my mama that while mama was going through with her husband, she kept pouring in the children while she was praying for her husband. Oh, mama, you ought to thank God you may have moved from one state to another state, from one city to another city city but mama kept you together look at somebody in the face and say oh mama kept us together I want to encourage every mama that God has given you strength to say thank you God for strengthening mama the reason she could say I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me is because of God the reason she could say no weapon formed against me shall be able is because of God the reason mama could tell the devil if God be for me who can be against me high five somebody and say thank God for mama mama said what you said now unto him that is able to keep me from falling and present me faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy yeah 
say, yeah, I got the clothes of y'all, but thank God for mama. Mama, your testimony is found in Proverbs chapter 31. The Bible says that your children will call you blessed and your husband will praise you because many women have done excellent but you surpass them all. Is there anybody that can say I thank God for my mama? I could have been on the street but mama loved me. I could have given up but mama prayed for me. She had me on a man took the time to pray for me. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Somebody say yes. Thank God for mama. Jesus told a man. Go back to your family. You've been blessed to have a good family. And I've had to strengthen your wife and the kid's mama to take care of them while you were gone. It was just like a bike missing a wheel, a plane missing a propeller. But now I want you to get back in the place. Well, I've called you to lead, called you to follow, called you to protect, so God can get the glory out of your life. I want to, on this great day, extend the invitation to you. Because you say, Pastor, I need to thank God more. Because sometimes I thought that mother was not looking out for me, but really she was. She was not trying to be my friend. She was being my mother. She saw things I couldn't see. She heard things I couldn't hear. She was protecting me. She was loving me. And I want to give you an opportunity to come to Jesus. If you don't know him, the Bible says that Jesus told Nicodemus, there's certain things you can't see until you're born of water and born of spirit. Once salvation comes into your life, you have a different perspective of the same life that you've been living. The Bible declares that this man that we preached about that was blessed so he could go back home that the people in the town was offended and fearful when he was closed in his right mind. And I know that there may be some habits that you have right now, but I, I have no second thought from reading the Bible. There's no situation that's so far gone Jesus can't fix. There's no demon he can't deliver. There's no habit he can't break. And he says in the Gospel of John, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Glory to God. Somebody shall glory. And I want to pray with you, man of God, woman of God, that know that you need to have a closer relationship with Jesus. Not a distant relationship, but one where he can become the Lord and Savior of your life. You might be by yourself today and on such a great occasion, you're struggling with struggles. He's not fearful of you. He's going to fix it. And I decree and declare it's going to be fixed and it won't take long. Reach your hand to the, to the screen and come in agreement with me. If I could be in the room, I would be there and I would minister to your word. But repeat after me. Say, Lord, I thank you for loving me when I didn't even love myself. I thank you for going to Calvary's cross with all of my sins. Thank you for going into the grave, coming out with all power. I confess, I believe, and I accept you as the Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. If you pray that prayer, you're saved. You need to get in some church believing community. Become a part of the City of Joy. You can write us at cityofjoyglobalministries at gmail.com and say, Pastor, I heard the word. I want to be a part of the City of Joy. I want to learn. I want to 
be taught. I want to be trained so I can go back home, so I can help my friends, so I can help my own children. And I want you to get that opportunity in the precious name of the Lord so you can grow and become a disciple in the name of the Lord. Somebody ought to shout amen. City of your nation, we love you. We want you to enjoy the rest of this day. On the behalf of the awesome city of joy, I give a shout out to my mama, big mama in Sanford, North Carolina, my awesome anointed wife, the mother of my only child, leading lady, Thompson. We love her and we thank God for her. And to all of the mothers all over the nation, have an awesome and amazing day. Until Wednesday, I'm signing off at the city of joy. This is C.A. Thompson, your host pastor. And if somebody asks you, how are you doing? Please tell them, Nehemiah tells us, the joy of the Lord, it is my strength. Be blessed. Good morning, CA Joy. We bring you greetings from the Gorms family. We want to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. And, and especially, especially our mothers. mothers. We love you. Enjoy your day. Oh, look, a bird. Jada, it's, it's Mother's Day. day. All right. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, especially our mom. Happy Mother's Day to my amazing, awesome mom and all the amazing, awesome moms of City of Joy. Love y'all. Say Happy Mother's Day, Nene. Happy Mother's Day, Nene. Happy Mother's Day, Mima. Happy Mother's Day, Nene. Happy Mother's Day, Auntie Goti. And Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. We love you. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. I love you. Hello. Good morning. This is Brother Mike saying Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers of the City of Joy and online. Enjoy your day and stay blessed. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I wanted to wish you Happy Mother's Day from Kayvon, Carrie, and Angel. We just want to say we love you and we hope that you enjoy your Mother's Day with full of joy, love, and happiness. To my awesome, amazing mother, Big Mama, Happy Mother's Day from the Thompson family. To Dr. M. R. Weaver, Durham, North Carolina, my mother-in-law, Happy Mother's Day. To my beautiful bride going on 25 years, mother, my only child, Lady Thompson, Happy Mother's Day. And may you all have many, many more.